Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us uh, go through few more uh, statistical methods of our accident analysis, guys. Guys, we have already discussed about uh, four different methods, but in our college classes, they told four that four methods. But when we asked for our faculty notes, so they gave these notes. In this, there are four different guys, along with formulas and along with examples. So here we'll be discussing in this lecture, guys. I think this answer will be a bit more relevant than the previous answer okay yes so let us start so the first method is a nothing but a regression method guys so in simple words i'll be explaining you regression so linear regression or any kind of regression is a nothing but you will be observing the previous values assume that this is the present you will be observing the previous values doing some mathematical calculations you will be predicting the future values so this concept is a nothing but a regression guys Okay, yes. So now let us go through the theory. So the data is collected on accident can be interpreted and used by this method. So any kind of data which you have collected could be used here. The basic principle is this method is that expected number of accidents on a, on a certain road during a given time period is dependent on the linear way of on some factor which are important for determining the accident frequency okay so basically whenever you are collecting the data if you collected the data of the previous one year of a particular year so using this data according to its increasing so assume that we are doing linear regression so and if it is increasing linearly so in that situation you can say that in future also it will increase linearly so this kind of a prediction with respect to time is a nothing but a regression method guys okay so the number of accidents occurring on a certain day is assumed to be normally distributed with a mean value being a linear function of regression variables so basically whenever you are considering this you will be considering with respect to some particular time okay so this is the basic formula you can say z is equals to alpha naught plus alpha 1 x plus alpha 2 x plus and so on up to alpha and x one. so here z is nothing but the accident rate Alpha is a nothing but the regression coefficient. X1, X2 are nothing but the independent variables. So these are the three parameters. These are the three parameters which we'll be having inside it. Okay. Yes. So you can just uh, the uh, independent variables here. We I told you, right? So that X, X1, X2, those could be anything. guys. So those could be the number of vehicles. Those could be the cost of the safety improvements. So how much it will be costing. It might be the number of uh, pedestrians, it might be the number of junctions, okay, so number of junctions where the accidents are occurring. So this is all about the linear regression concept, guys. So now let us continue with the Poisson distribution, okay, just give me a second. Okay, sorry for that, guys. Let us continue. Okay, so Poisson distribution, I think, I think everyone recalls that we have discussed this in the previous lecture also, right? Yes. So Poisson distribution is approximated for accident study because accidents are governed by the law of choice. Okay. Yes. So this is the simple formula guys. This is the same formula which we have discussed in our previous lecture. E power minus M, M power R by R factorial. Okay. Guys, we'll be taking some examples. So don't worry. Okay. So you can just go through the terminology if you want here. Okay. So here the only formula that you should remember is this formula guys. Okay okay so anyway we are while we are solving you will be getting a clear idea okay so this is the formula and m is equals to p into m capital M. so that is the thing that you should remember okay yes so let us start guys okay so assume that the given values in the question are this guys so it is observed that on an average a driver drives 500 kilometers so it is indirectly the distance during the course of one year so basically 500 kilometers in a span of one year the probability of having an accident is 100 per 200 million kilometers okay so it is really 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 less right so yes okay so what is the probability of a driver having at least two accidents during his driving career of 25 years so if he is traveling for 25 years what is the total distance he can travel guys so this is the total distance in kilometer right so each year he can travel 55000 so indirectly if you multiply 25 with 5000 you will be getting the total distance he can travel in 25 years right yes so that we will be calculating later on guys don't worry okay so firstly let us start so here we got p is equals to probability of having an accident per kilometer so what is the probability that an accident will occur every kilometer okay so that is what we will be checking so what he gave he so just give me a second guys i'll be taking a piece of paper 
ओके सो वॉट ही गेव ही गेव अज फॉर एवरी हंड्रेड एक्सीडेंट्स इट विल अक्कर फॉर एवरी टू मिलियन राइट आई थिंक सो इट इज टू पवर सिक्स किलोमीटर्स राइट यस ओके सो अवर क्वेश्चन इज इन वन किलोमीटर हाउ मेनी एक्सीडेंट्स विल अक्कर सो एक्स इज इक्वल्स टू हंड्रेड ओके बाई 200 हंड्रेड इंटू टेन पवर सिक्स राइट यस सो इफ यू कैलकुलेटेड यूल बी गेटिंग इन दिस वे गाइज जीरो पॉइंट डबल जीरो डबल जीरो डबल जीरो फाइव एक्सीडेंट पर वेहिकल किलोमीटर ओके यस सो नाउ वी गॉट दट प्रॉबिलिटी सो नाउ लेट अस हाव कैलकुलेट द किलोमीटर्स दैट द यूजर हैव कैन ट्रैवल सो ही इज हैविंग ट्वेंटी फाइव इयर्स ऑफ अ कैरियर राइट यस एंड एवरी इयर ही विल बी ट्रैवलिंग फाइव हंड्रेड सो इफ यू कैलकुलेट यूल बी गेटिंग ट्वेल्व फाइव ट्रिपल जीरो ओके सो वन ट्वेंटी फाइव Hundred thousand. Okay. Yes. So these many kilometers. So now we know the probability and we know the distance. So multiply them. So we got the value. If you multiply them, we got zero point zero six two five. Right. Yes. So this is M guys. Okay. So now I think everyone knows that the pro the value. Right. So we need at least two. So at least two means it might be zero. It might be one. It might be two. So it should not be greater than. Two right yes so that is the reason why we should calculate for all of them guys guys I think we discussed this in uh, mathematics already this comes under probability concept guys okay so please concentrate for one minute you'll be having a clear idea okay yes so here we are trying to calculate for at least two right yes okay so just give me a second let me cross check it is exactly two or at least two okay every year okay. so probability of a driver having at least two accidents okay so if it is at least two you just need to add them right so why are we subtracting it from here okay probability of a driver having at least two accidents in an year okay so means this at least two okay so at least two means we will also okay so sorry sorry at least two means greater than two right sorry guys i was a bit confused okay so at least two means we should have two Three, four, and greater, right? Yes. Sorry for that. I was confused. Okay. So means out of all, you if you subtract this before two, what are there? So we are having one and zero. So if you subtract from total probability minus the probability of doing zero accidents and probability of doing one accident, we will be getting the indirectly the probability of doing two accidents, right? So let me write it here. So assume that the probability of zero, one, two, three, four, and so on up to n, the total is a one. in this situation we want this value right yes so if you want this value you can write this as a probability of 2 plus 2 and so on up to n plus probability of 0 plus probability of 1 is equals to 1 right so if you transfer these that side so probability of 2 is equals to 1 minus probability of 0 plus sorry minus probability of 1 so just we are solving that here only guys so 1 minus probability of 0 minus probability of 1 so just by substituting the values in our formula you will be getting the value Okay, yes, guys. Please ca carry calcium, guys, because we cannot remember these values, e power values, and all those things. In calcium, you can solve them directly. Okay, yes. So this is a single problem, guys. So we are having a few more problems which you need to solve it, guys. Okay. So in some situations, he will not be saying the number of accidents like in terms of things. So we need to calculate the average. So here we are required to calculate the average. So we calculated and we solved. Okay. Similarly, here also the same situation. Okay. Yes. So I hope everyone got a clear idea on this method. So. let us continue with the next method so use of chi square distribution for comparison of accident data okay yes so just to go through the theory guys so in this we will be using a formula which looks like this so chi square is equals to a minus bc by a plus b okay so a minus bc whole square by a plus b into c okay yes so where a is the number of accidents bc be the number of accidents per expected number of accidents expected if there are no improvements so basically if there are no improvements what is the chance of accidents that could occur we indicate with bc and c is called as the control ratio okay so bc is a single word guys it is not b into c please remember that okay yes so let us go through an example guys okay yes so here is an example so at an intersection of two roads there were 20 accidents per year so 20 accidents per year okay Okay, so after providing signal, the number of accidents are reduced to eight accidents per year. So basically, after providing a signal, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. So in the city where they where this intersection is situated, it is observed that the number of accidents increase at a rate of ten percent. Okay. So in city where this intersection is situated, 
is is situated observed that the number of accidents increased at 10% during the period of covering the above two observations test whether the improvement of the function is proper or not so that's the question so basically how many accidents occurred guys so currently that is 8 so number of accidents before improvement is a b that is a 20 okay so we got two values and we also know that the c value is a nothing but the division right yes so if you want to calculate the c value it is a nothing but the 10 percent increase on those things so we'll be getting a 110 by 100 so we'll be getting 1.0 just to substitute them you'll be getting the observed value okay yes so i hope everyone got some basic idea right yes Okay, so then you will be checking whether it is a, a good thing or a bad thing with respect to the percentage. So from the table we got, I think there should be a table but it is not given in here, okay. Okay, so I think we need to, we will be calculating C from that only, right, yes. Okay, or the C should be given in the question. So I assume, let us assume that the C is given in the question, guys, okay, yes. Okay, so basically here we need to have the table 8.5 but... Uh, our faculty did not write it. Okay, so let us go through the next question better. Okay, so for the following data test whether there is any significant increase in the accident rate in two years. Okay, so in the first year the accidents are occurred 300 and in the second year the accidents are occurred 400. So indirectly by observing you can say they are increased and the vehicle kilometers travelled is 250 and 300 kilometers. So basically here there is a increase in the travel also. Okay, so in this situation we can use guys. Okay, so here we are saying A is equal to 400 that is nothing but the present value and the past value B is equal to 300. Okay, so as the traffic increased from sorry traveling increased from traffic okay traffic or traveling traveling increased from 250 to 350 million vehicles per kilometer. So C is equal to the previous by present right. So pre sorry present by previous that is nothing but 1.2 we got okay so then you'll be substituting the values here so we got 1.9 okay so again from table 8.5 i think we need to check the textbook for this guys okay i'll be updating in the group about this question guys okay yes so size square value for one degree of freedom and five percent so basically we will i think we will be having a table in which we will be having the corresponding values for this size square so i think that is the reason why with respect to percentage so with that percentage the value should be 3.8 our observed value is less than that so we can say that the hypothesis okay we conclude that the null hypothesis is true so basically our hypothesis is true and the number of accidents has not reduced by improvement okay but they have in increased right so that is the conclusion you can say by this so basically i think in our examination if they are giving these kind of questions they need to provide that table so the table will indirectly consist of the values of a size square with the percentages guys so with the, this size square value this percentage we are having this value like that so the table will be in that way like logarithmic table okay yes so i hope everyone got a clear idea so let us continue with the last method that is nothing but quality control method okay just give me a second okay sorry for that guys let us continue okay so basically the quality control method the last method is almost similar to poison distribution so this method is basically built upon upon poison distribution model for occurrence of accidents from past records on estimation of m okay so the expected average number of accidents is first made okay so basically m is nothing but the probability right so i hope everyone remembers we discussed in this lecture only right yes Okay. So, the probability of occurrence of that particular accident, okay, yes. So, based on that M, if it is, if that value is accurate, then it is fine. If it is not accurate, we will be checking it, guys, okay. So, that is a simple method, you can say, okay. Guys, I have searched for the table. I found a few tables, but they do not seem that much similar to our requirement, guys. Okay, so if it is asked in our examination, I think they will be giving a paper in which the values will be given. So, it, it will look in this way. So, on one axis, you will be having the values of the probability that we got. That is nothing but 19, 1.9. So, it, here in this table, 1.9 is not there. And here is the percentage, guys. So, if it is 5% and if the value is a 0 0.9, then you will be saying that 1.61 is the result. So, in that way. Okay, so I think the image is also, just give me a second. Okay, it's going to a website. Okay, so now the uh, table is a bit clear, right? Yes. So in this way, it will be there, guys. Okay? Yes. So in this way, you can just uh, uh, write the values and you can check whether the only condition that you should remember is if our observed value is a less and this value is a greater, then you can say that that hypothesis is a true and there is a no reduction or there is no improvement, guys. Okay? Yes. So I hope everyone got some clear idea about this uh, methods so in the next lecture we will be discussing about the safety performance of function guys okay yes so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching